Hello everybody, today we're gonna delve deeper into charts. We're gonna play with bar mark, point mark, and line mark. We're also going to animate changes in the chart and customize a little bit more the axis used to display the data. This customization will also be dependent on the size class of the device. Okay, in our previous video, we used the service, the to-do service, to get some to-dos. We made some changes here because we're gonna need a lot more to-dos to display over time. So what I did was create this function, get mock to-dos, and what it does is to the existing to-dos, it iterates through them and creates more instances of each, generating a random date in the past 12 months. And that's pretty much all that we do. Just increase the number of to-dos and change the done date Let's create our new charts in a different view. We're gonna call this one timeline charts since we're going to be showing data over time. And let's add it to our top bar. Since we are displaying, again, a list of to-dos, we're gonna use the same view model that we have been using for the previous two classes. It's our to-do list view model. This one just requests the to-dos from our service. And in our preview, we're also going to use our service just to avoid creating a bunch of mock data. Just a refresher here. Everything starts with chart. To create the chart view, we need to import charts. It's not in the standard SwiftUI library. And we need to have our data that will be displaying. We're gonna call this to-dos over time. And it cannot be just a list of to-do. We need to group them with a date. So let's do it. Um, yeah, I don't think with a dictionary. Let's instead do it with a struct. And the struct will have the date that all the to-dos have in common and the list of to-dos. Let's start displaying the um, to do group per date with a point mark. Let's just drive point. It has an X and Y value. The X value will be the date, and the Y value will be the quantity of to do's. For now, we're gonna group the to-dos by day, month, and year. We want to ignore the time. So with that, let's create helper methods in date. So we make an extension from date and create this method date without time. So it's going to return another date. To remove the time-related components, we're gonna use calendar. We have a method which is a date from components. So we will have the year, the month, and the um, they from self. This is an optional. Okay, something fails, we return self. Now we need another helper method, which is group by array by default has filter, map, count, sort, but it doesn't have group by. So we're gonna create an extension of array right now. It's gonna have group by. Let's worry about the parameters later, but what does it return? Let's return a dictionary with some value k and just a collection of the elements of the array. Right now k is not a type, so let's define it with generics. And now let's declare our method. So we'll have a starting dictionary, an empty dictionary of the group. We need to iterate over the array and start adding them in this dictionary.
Now here comes the interesting part. This is generic. What are we going to group them by? How do we access that key? So we're going to do that using key path. Key path is something by default in Swift. We can specify it. We already do it when we specify the ID in it for each. So notice that key path has two generics. One is the root and the other one is the value of that root. So the root of our key path is going to be element. And the value is going to be k. And now that we have a key path, we can use it. Just open square brackets. We have this key path. And we just pass in the parameter key path. And now we have our key. And that was the hard part. After that, it's just getting the elements for the current key, which may be an empty array. We add the current element to that array and we add the mutated array once again to the dictionary. And we do that for every element in the array. And now we have our group by function. With these two helper methods at our disposal, let's create our to do's over time. To enter a key path, it's backslash dot and then the date. Now here we have finished them, but we want it without time. So let's go to the to-dos and add a new computed variable, which is finished on without time using the helper method, the helper method we created for date. This is a computed variable. We can access it with key path and there we have it. We don't want the body variable to have to deal with a dictionary, so we're gonna transform our dictionary into an array once again by creating the to-do per date with the key and the element. And on the preview on the right, you can see now we have our points being distributed with a quantity over a period of time. Let's add some padding and the preview is taking a little bit too low, so let's reduce the number of random to do that we generate to 10 per existing to do. Okay, now I think we can improve the x axis. Right now it's showing the quarters, but we can change that with the chart x axis modifier. With the axis marks, we can specify how the values are, are displayed. So we're going to strike by month. This way, the x axis will display all of the months. And the value label is how we're going to display the month. So here, the format will be daytime.month. Now it is showing abbreviated. Let's instead show narrow or just one letter. That looks better for this size of the screen. However, we also want to show abbreviated. We also have white, but I mean, white is not uh, applicable for this screen. It's too small. So let's go with narrow and show abbreviated when we have the iPhone in landscape orientation. Notice this neat trick that now we have in previews in Xcode 14, we can show the preview in landscape. To find out the orientation of the device, we're going to use the size classes. We can do this by declaring an environment variable and specifying the horizontal size class. So basically, we will just condition this value label, how we display it. If the size class is compact, then we show the narrow. If not, then abbreviate it. Let's change our point mark to a line mark and see what happens. Yep, that doesn't look pretty at all. That's because we're plotting the lines at a different point. It's not like we're doing one point after the other. To fix this, we sort our to do's over time by date. Let's reload. And now that looks much better. We can also improve how the lines are drawn, not so straight. Instead, we can use curves 
by changing the interpolation method. Here we're using cut mall rom. And yeah, the curves look better. Now let's add a state so that we can change how we are displaying the data. But then we're just displaying monthly. Let's make it so that we can display it monthly, quarterly, or yearly. We'll do this with a picker. So we'll have these three options. And we have a state to track these changes. Little mistake here, it's not ID, it's tag. And now that we have our segmented picker, how do we change how we display the data in the charts? Let's start by changing how we show the X axis. So the configuration will depend on the mode. Right now we have the monthly configuration with this axis mark. We need to create one for quarter and for year. And start here with quarter. Let's change the stride by to be that quarter. And let's see in the preview here. Oh, it crashed. Hmm. Let's add a value label. Okay, I found out what was happening. If we go to the documentation of quarter, we can see that it's not supported yet. Let's switch back the stride to by month and let's play with the value that we have this parameter. We can cast this value as a date and then we can check if we are in a quarter. So what we're gonna do basically is draw a value label for the first month of the quarter. We can do it with this casting. Mm, hold on, I'm missing something here. Ah, yes, you don't cast with the normal as value has a dot as method. So we do dot as state cell. And now to check if we are in the first month of the quarter, we need to be able to access the month as in the number. For that, let's go to our date helper and create another helper method to get the month of a date. Now we can check if we are in the beginning of the quarter. If so, we draw an axis grid line and a value label. And here the value label, we will have the date in a wide format since we have more space. For our year case, that year stride by year is supported and the axis value label will have that date time that year. And for now let's use that two digits and see how it looks. Okay, our period is no longer crashing. This is the quarter here. See how year looks. Mm, kind of good, but not quite. Before fixing that, let's first change the two digits to default digits and let's add a foreground color to the axis grid line that represents the quarter and let's see the difference. So when we move to quarter, you now with the blue lines in the first month of the quarter. Let's add an annotation here to our line. Remember the point marks that we created? Let's just copy this declaration of line mark and let's add a point mark and see what, how it looks. Hmm. That looks better. Let's change the foreground style of the points. Uh, 
that looks much better. Now we have a graph that combines both line marks and point marks. I need to change how we present yearly just so it's different from monthly and quarterly. Let's display different marks. So if it's quarter or month in the mode, we use our combination of line and point marks. If not, if we are in year, then we use bar marks to show the to do's. Now we still need to improve all the data I shown regarding the x-axis, but first, let's add another helper method to our, our extension, which is grouping by, not by a key path, but by a closure that uses something with the element to get the key. Let's also create a helper method to get the year just as we got the month. Now that we have these methods, we can create another helper variable here, which is the yearly to do over time. So instead of grouping by the key path, we're going to group using a closure that gets the year from the to do. So we get our finish done and we get the year. All right, this is also going to pose a problem since our to do per date need a date method, year is an int. Let's create another helper method that gets us the date by year, removing the month and date components. So now that we have our yearly to do's over time, let's use them in the bar mark. And that still has issues, but you know what? First, let's fix quarterly because right now we're displaying a lot of dots. We should not be doing that. We should just show the dots for the first month of each quarter. We'll just create another variable for our quarterly to-dos. Here we will use another group by with the closure method. So we can group all of the to-dos in the same quarter. And since we now have different variables for these two modes, we need to change how the for each is used here. So we just condition the to do with the mode. And we use that variable in the for each. And now that's much better. Now is how we have the points in our monthly, whereas in the quarter, we have it all grouped by. And the x-axis is also better. Now, why is this change being animated? It's because in the binding variable of our picker in the selection, we added dot animation. And because it's dot animation, we can mix it with other things like spring animation, linear, easy in, easy out. But let's leave it at linear for now. Now, let's fix the yearly to-dos. First, let's create two variables. One is for the year before the first year that's in the to-do list, and one is going to be for the one year after the latest date in our to-do list. Oh, 
I haven't noticed this. We're using the wrong to do per day here. It should be really yearly to do over time. And now it looks much better. See how the number is much higher in the bar marks. Since we're using different types of axes and I'm also going to add more modifiers to the bar chart, let's just make two separate charts. One for monthly and quarterly and another one for yearly. Beside the x-axis, I also want to tell apart the bars with color. So let's have the foreground style using the year as plotable. Now the year, I remove this function. So let's add it back again in our date helper. And remember how the bars are appearing on the edge. Let's increase the chart scale with domain. That's why we created the one year before and one year after variables. Okay, we're improving. Now the bars are in the center. However, notice this legend, how it appears like it's a range. Now that's because year is an int. Let's change that to a string. There, now it's changing this. We can also increase the width of the bars with, well, yeah, bar mark has a width property. To be, let's reduce it to 100. And also, I don't want the colors that I'm being given here by default. We can change that with chart foreground style scale where I explicitly specify the mapping. So for example, here 2021 will be orange and 2022 will be purple. Let's see how it looks. Ah, better. For a finishing touch, let's hide the legend. Already have the x-axis telling me what years those bars belong to. And that's it. Today we saw how powerful charts are. We didn't have to do much to support animations. Mixing the line with a point mark didn't require much work on our side. Next time we will be delving into even more advanced topics with charts in CUTI. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.